Baby, I got a brand new stand-up comedy hour. Go to chrisdcomedy.com. It's called Right Intention, Wrong Move. See it live in a city near you. I got a bunch of dates coming up. Go to the website, see them in your home city. Also, patreon.com slash Comedy, where some of the best work of this podcast happens. 75 plus hours of footage and clips and content that only exists there. And it's the only way to get involved, to get your name read out on our YouTube, on our main feed episodes. And we're starting to live Zoom one lucky fan into the episode live on the air. And you can only enter that chance to, to be that person at patreon.com slash Comedy. And it's just great. We love it. It su- helps support the show. Um, and, you know, if you support me, I can help support you, give you the show every week at the level we want to do it. Patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Go become a Puerto Rican. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the new era of the Chrissy Chaos Podcast. We are in the new studio schmoodio. We are in the building. We're not in the room because the actual room that we're going to do the podcast studio from still has a bed frame in it that the previous owners, movers, forgot to take. Now, you may be wondering, why are you watching this podcast and smelling some weed, smelling some Kardashian ass, smelling some MGK hair product why are you smelling some some lauren michaels ass well the reason why you're smelling that folks is because the uh, apartment that i'm sitting in the apartment that i am doing chrissy chaos from is the apartment where the one and only pete davidson and kim and kim kardashian fell in love if you watched any enter e tonight segment or the people segment or Mario Lopez segment, you would know that Pete and Kim fell in love in this apartment on Staten Island. And now it is the home of the Chrissy Chaos podcast. It went from Pete and Kim having sex to learning about the Coliseum in Rome, which we will be doing here in about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so that is is what it is. Chaos has entered the building, and I'm coming in with my own Kim Kardashian, known as T.T. Jerry. So there's also another couple that have fallen in love in here, and that is Chrissy D. and T.T. Jerry. T.T. Jerry is my Kim Kardashian, and that's what it is. T.T. Jerry is my Kim Kardashian, and um, and, um, uh, my Bruce Jenner, my Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner, is homeless pimp. And Vanity is Kylie Jenner because she's spending too much money on the show. She's <laughs> Vanity is Kylie Jenner. She's spending thirty thousand dollars a minute on on private jets. But and and hip. She's asking me questions about her hip. <laughs> she's trying to get free medical advice. And also, she needs a real estate lawyer. If you're a good real estate lawyer out there, we need to protect Vanity's apartment at all costs because they're trying to pull some BS in the New York City, uh, you know, housing market, and they're trying to raise her rent, which. It affects the show here because then I have to pay her more. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome. This will not be it. So what we're going to do, folks, is we are going to move this studio into the bedroom, which is right there. We're going to paint the wall. I'm thinking purple. We're going to put the signs up. We're going to ha- finally have a place for the artwork, for the pictures, for the beautiful things the fans have sent me over the last 18 months. We finally have a home. We've been thrown out of the sunroom at the house. We've been told not to do the show there anymore because it's, it's just too much of a goddamn problem. So now the chaos has finally found a home. We have found a home for a homeless pimp, and literally <laughs> I've given Vanity the keys in case she does get kicked out of her apartment because the rent went up too much. <laughs> so we have found a home now for the Chrissy Chaos crew. I'm also going to open this up and say if you are a Puerto Rican, you can stay here. I want to start airbnb this place out to Puerto Ricans only. I want to have, there's Airbnb, I want to do Air Chaos, where if you need a place to stay in New York City and you are a proven Puerto Rican and and you are only a proven Puerto Rican if you went to patreon.com slash Christy Comedy and signed up for whatever it is, the $5 level, $10 level, whatever level you want, where all the great content comes, where the kind of heartbeat of the show is at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. If you are a proven Puerto Rican, you can talk to me, and I'll let you maybe stay on the couch as long as Vanity is um, not here and homeless pimps 
I'm not here brewing beers in the sink. <laughs> Sorry. So it's fine. So the problem is with this place is we can't figure out how to turn on the air conditioning and we can't figure out how to turn on the lights without the fans blasting full blast. So there's a heat wave going on right now in New York City, but we do basically Pete hired one of his friends to do the electrical work and he fucked it up. So that's what it is. And that's probably why Pete moved out because he's like, I shouldn't have hired one of my friends to do all the electrical work. Pete moved out because Kim was like, we got to get off this island. Yeah, Kim Kardashian was like, listen, you're not going to live. I'm not going to carry on a public relationship with you if you're living on Staten Island. Where T.T. Jerry has told me I'm only going to carry on a public relationship with you if you stay on Staten Island. (laughs) So that's the difference between the two Kardashians, between my Kimmy K and Petey's Kimmy K. But it's a new home. It's a new era. We now, I mean, we, if you listen to last week's episode, this is what it's going to be. We won't go as crazy on history every week, but we're coming in prepared. We're coming in focused. Okay. We're coming in. I'm, I'm, I'm next. Okay. I'm fucking next up. I just want to tell you guys that, that I am goddamn next. All right. I'm sick and tired of, of being told, oh, you're going to be this one day, you're going to be that one day. Now we're just going to do it, okay? I'm the next Louis C.K. I'll come and jerk off in your plants. Or he didn't do that. Did he do that? Wasn't that Justin Bieber? That was Justin Bieber who jerked off in... Whatever it is, maybe neither one of them jerked off in the plants, but I, I'll i come jerk... I'll, I'll, I'm, the next, I'm the next Louis C.K., Bill Burr. I'm the, next, I'm the next one of them. Dave Chappelle. Cosby. Cosby. I'm all of them, Okay. <laughs> I'm all of them combined in one Chrissy Chaos movement. We're here. We got Homeless Pimp. We got Vanitia. We got the regulars. Now, listen to me. You got to listen to me, okay? It, it, it's, it's, this is, this show, first of all, has only gotten this far because of you, the fans. So, I mean, literally, you got you don't understand how hype we are for having a new freaking studio. I mean, finally we have a home. We've literally been nomads. We've been fucking gypsies for the past 18 months, teetering on getting thrown out every week. We were right on the precipice of getting thrown out. Well, now it finally happened, folks. We got thrown out and we got thrown into our home. We actually got forced into our home. We are the new Syrian refugees. We are Syria. We are Syria here, and we found a home with the only country that opened up its borders and let us in, and this is a fact, and that is Germany, my home country. Germany, my home country, they actually, that's a stat, they let most Syrians in. Our Venetia is our Angela Merkel. That's what it is. Venetia Venetia is the body, is the the spirit of Angela Merkel, and homeless pimp looks like Angela Merkel. (laughs) The, the prime minister or president or whatever, king of fucking Germany. Who cares? Um, also, you may notice one thing. I don't have a hat on. You want to know why? I beat COVID, folks. I beat COVID. Chrissy beat COVID. So on the sixth day, on the sixth day, I tested negative three times. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, I tested negative three times on the sixth day. My smell and taste is starting to come back. I'm being able to taste 50 to 60% of my foods. I have zero COVID. Um, It did get dark there for a couple of days for me. I got to be honest with you. I was like, what if I never smell my, you know, daughter's shit again? What if I never smell my daughter's hair? What if I never smell, uh, you know, Vinny's cooking? What if, you know, what if I, I, I never smell homeless pimp's beard? And now the smell, the scent has, is starting to come back. I will tell you I beat COVID and it's gone. My father still has not shit yet, though. So I, I'm going to keep my Fitbit on until my dad shits. By the way, is there anything gayer than a Fitbit? Uh, the Fitbit has got to be the gayest article of clothing or the gayest contraption you can have is the Fitbit with a nice gay name. Have you started talking about your steps yet? Let's check in my steps so far. <laughs> So let's check my steps so far. It's 1224. I have 7,791 steps, 3.74 miles. But the Fitbit is a stupid motherfucker because it calculates steps when I'm driving my car, you asshole. I'm driving in a car and the Fitbit steps are going up. It's like, what are you, fucking retarded? I'm in a car, jerk off. Um, but I, I'm so happy. I'm happy to be here. We will be in Montreal, in Montreal, 
this week, okay? We're doing a live Christy Chaos Thursday, and I'm doing a headlining show at Club Soda Friday, and then Wednesday, so Wednesday's Burlington, Vermont, at Higher Ground Ballroom. Tickets almost sold out. That's Wednesday, July 27th. Thursday, July 28th, Chrissy Chaos, live Chrissy Chaos from the Hyatt Hotel in one of the conference rooms there. Jessica Kirsten, my guest, Homeless Pimp, will be there. Friday, July 28th or 29th, whatever that, I think it's the 29th, Club Soda headlining my own show, 7 p.m., Montreal, downtown. Brand new stand-up comedy hour. So be there. It's going to be fun. Now listen to me. I already, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Do I feel 100%? No. But I'm not contagy-wagey anymore. And once you're not contagy-wagey, I think you start to feel just like you've beaten it and you've gotten past it. You know, a lot of people now have experienced COVID, and I was late to the game. As a matter of fact, I kind of felt embarrassed that I had it because I was like, how did I get it this late? But I think you will find out in time that um, it was manipulated. The virus was manipulated to get the people who it didn't get. Now, if it still hasn't gotten you, then you'll probably do up in the next um, on the next iPhone update. You'll, you'll be given COVID. On the, so if you update, that's what happened, by the way. I updated my iPhone and I got COVID. Uh, <laughs> um, and by the way, Greenland, the all the polar ice caps are melting in Greenland, and the sea levels are going to rise. But we're on the we're on the tenth floor here, so you're not going to get us. Unfortunately, you can't get us. So the Chrissy Chaos Podcast Studio is safe, even if Greenland fucking melts into the ocean. I love what you were saying before the show about like climate change being the new trigger. So now there's things going around where COVID is not going, it's not really scaring us. Even with the new variants, people are like, oh, well, I'll just take Paxlovid. I'll take Paxlovid's dogs, which is the new medicine that basically just protects your lungs from dying. I'll do Paxlovid's dogs and uh, my lungs will be protected. So COVID doesn't scare us as much anymore. Climate change is going to be the new narrative that gets pushed forward um, and, 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 and is the, the new fear-mongering thing. Now, is it really fear-mongering? I don't know. I mean, Italy and Europe is so hot that it's on fire. People are dropping dead in the middle of the streets. Um, I think in Spain, I heard every 40 minutes someone is dying. There you go. Every 40 minutes in Spain, someone is dying. But that's also... Uh, but are they doing bachata in the streets? Is that what they're doing? I, mean, I think so. Are they doing... Are they dressing up like matadors and running around? Are they dying every 40 minutes because they're being attacked by bulls? In no, Mat- it said that yeah they were dressed as matadors. They're dressed as matadors. What are you doing? What are you doing trying to, you know, psych out bulls when it's a thousand degrees out, Carmen? Take a seat. Siéntate. How much does a Patreon have to get to for you to fight bulls? If honestly, dude, I'm changing the goal. I said, <laughs> I said if we can get to six thousand Patreon members, I'll do a Patreon block party. That still stays. Also, add to that goal six thousand Patreon members. I'm going to Spain. I'm fighting the bulls. That's. Mark it, write it down. Venetia is going to write it down, going to add it to the list. Um, but they are calling uh, Kylie a, a climate terrorist for, like, the private jets she was taking. Yeah, Kylie is a climate terrorist. Um, she's, been, she's been taking private jets everywhere, which I got to be honest with you. I'm terrified of a private jet. I don't want to get on a private jet. I love it. I think it's great, dude. See, I've had a couple of opportunities, and I've turned them down. I, I'm just scared. Even even I had an opportunity to fly on a very small plane um, to go to Nantucket from New York, and I instead took a car to a ferry. Because, really? But you know, that's the best way to die. You'd be proud to die that way, no? Yeah, I guess. I guess. But I still think, I still think I'll die. I still genuinely in my heart believe I'm going to die at a baseball game. I'm going to get hit by a foul ball. Yeah, the Ferry Hawks. Now, at the Ferry Hawks, <laughs> I'm going to get drilled in the head with a foul ball. Um, speaking of, um, drilled in the head, I'm about to get drilled in the wallet because here's the I am poppy segment, which is every week I'll tell you something going on in my fatherhood trials and tribulations that maybe can apply to you or, you know, just parenting, you know, what it is. First of all, I want to shout out my daughter's, um, my daughter Delilah made this for me. Um, and she asked me to put this up in the studio. She made this for me. She said, this is, this is Delilah. And then this is, she said she's just alone, is what she said. She just feels alone. And she said this is the rest of the family, which isn't there. So she, because all the kids at camp got asked to draw a picture of 
They wanted to draw themselves and their family, and Delilah draw this and a tree that's been burned to the ground. And um, this is a tornado, which she said is T.T. Jerry. And that's my heart, she said, which is outside my body because Mommy ripped it out. And, um, yeah, and then she's standing, she's standing on, um, on a table, and then that's a bird. Well, that's a V for Venetia. And then that's the sun, which um, that's up there. My other daughter, Violet, chewed a piece of it off. So this is what it is. So I don't know, man. Look, she looks like a climate change prodigy. If my daughter comes out, if she literally comes out to be some fucking lunatic <laughs> climate change Greta Thunberg person, I swear to God, I, 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 that would be, I'll never, ever, 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 ever be the father that walks away from their family or their kids. That's just is not in my DNA. But I would start beating, I would start beating her. <laughs> I would start, I just start, I, and I'd go old school beating, by the way. Like, I'd really, like, I'd, I'd what do they, what do they, when you hit somebody with a belt? A what are those called? Swatch? swatch? Or, oh, yeah, or hit him with a, like, what Michael Jackson's dad used to do to him with a, is it a swatch? I don't know. I he, thought that's, he was doing something else. <laughs> yeah. Swatch. I thought Swatch was a company, was a watch I company. I would love for her, I would love for her to, like, become Greta Thunberg with that voice. She sails to Manhattan. Oh, my God. Dude, Greta Thunberg, by the way, is a time traveler. Um, Has anyone checked in on her? Is she alive? I, well, I think, like, most of these people, you know, you just get your, your – you just, you know, you, you, your whole life is bullshit. Like AOC last week, making believe she got oh, arrested. So funny. See, see what's happening. You see, everyone's like, oh, so dumb. Even, even my Puerto Rican family, who was so pro AOC, is like starting to get to the point where like she's whack. Like she's too much. Like which sucks because she had so much promise, being a female Latina really kicking ass in Washington, D.C., and then you just pushed it too far. Now you've went too far again, and now people don't like you. And, you know, it just sucks because she had promise. She had promise, but now it's going to go back to fucking old white farts. No, I think Cardi B. We get behind Cardi B. I'll get behind Cardi. I'd like to get behind Cardi B <laughs> in many ways. It's, wait, now, wait a second. Is Cardi B single or is she in a relation? She's... She She's in and out of a marriage. With Quavo? Who is it? No, 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 not Quavo. His uh, band member, Offset. I believe she's Offset. Offset, okay. Yeah. Um, by the way, so so I Am Poppy segment, I want to talk about that that um, little painting, but I also want to talk about is, so August 17th to the 20th, I'll be at the Brea Improv in Brea, California, which is very close to Anaheim, California. So I've decided to get there a couple of days before and take the familia, including T.T. Jerry and my mom, to Disneyland in California. To Disneyland, who, by the way, Disney just said that they're not calling, um, uh, they're, they're changing the name of Fairy Godmother now because they don't, because they, they, they feel that they um, discredit too many people and they're not inclusive to enough people if they just say Fairy Godmothers, um, Fairy Godmother in training. They said that that excludes, um, you know, biological uh, males or non-biological males or whatever, biological days. So now it's fairy godmother. I believe it's now fairy godmother apprentice. So it's inclusive to all. So just fully expect someone to bring a gun to Disneyland <sighs> soon. Um, so that you could just expect that. And, um, and it won't be me. It's not going to be me, but I'm just saying that <laughs> you piss people off that someone's going to just try to do that. They're going to smuggle a gun into Goofy's fucking head, and there'll be a shooting there. And maybe it'll be when I'm there. I don't know. If it is there when, if it is there when I'm there, you better believe I'll get on IG Live, and I'll be counting my steps on my Fitbit. So, <laughs> oh, my God. I will run away from my family immediately. Just, <laughs> Well, what I'll do, honestly, if there was a if there was a mass shooting at Disneyland when I'm there, when people are running for the exits, I think I'd run for the rides I want to go on because there'd be no line, and I'd get a I'd get what is a mass shooter going to wait for me to come around on you know a roller coaster That's and just smart. snipe me? No, dude, you're the safest place you could be is on the rides. I'll run right onto the rides. That's what it is. Or I'd hide behind Cinderella. That's smart. Uh, you hit the log flume, you splash them. Yes, but just get them out there. Um. So I'll be going to Disneyland. I've I've rented an Airbnb, the, uh, a Disneyland Airbnb uh, themed Airbnb. 
uh, from a young uh, from a Filipino man who says he doesn't have cameras in the bathrooms. Now, he's a single man that has designed his house to be Disneyland themed. He says because he said in the message, he goes, he goes, it's just a joy for me to watch the children's faces when they walk into the rooms that I've themed for that I've Disney themed. And I said, is that because you have cameras in the rooms? He said, no, I'm usually there when families check in because I like to give them the lay of the land. I said, you have cameras in the room and I actually don't care. Just give me a little bit of a discount and I'll still take the place. And he wrote, okay. Now, is this your first Disney experience? No, I've been to Disney World, Florida, but that remember when I went to Disney World in Orlando, I had chlamydia. Oh, yeah. Remember? Oh, yeah. I, I, I was, had chlamydia the whole time. You think you'll make the DILFs page again? God, I hope so. I hope I make the DILFs of Disney post page again. I mean, <laughs> when I made it the last time, it was just classic because what what you don't know about this picture, well, what you do know now is we have it up. Look at my daughter. It's so happy. She looks like a she looks like a fucking psychopath right there. <laughs> she looks clinically insane. She literally looks nuts. She's got red shit all over her mouth. And you would think that's from eating ice. It's it's no, it's her lips are so chapped and she refused to let any of us put on chapstick, but she looks like a lunatic. She looks like like a baby cub that just was eating a carcass and has just got blood and all over her face. Now, this is me. We were there in December of 2019, right before the pandemic started. I have active chlamydia in this picture. So I have full drip right here. Nobody knows about it but me. Um, and uh, and it's very, very interesting time because I enjoy Disney. I went on many rides with my daughter. My daughter says she, she kind of, re- you know, she was four at the time. She's like, I remember the experience. I don't remember the experience, but I remember it. Um, I remember the last night just dealing with the, what, I remember my, and I've told this story, my boy, Lukey the doctor, shout out Lukey, um, sent me a prescription for um, chlamydia medication. I forgot what it was. Uh, sent it to a pharmacy on the outskirts of Orlando, and I went and picked up that medication with goofy ears on. I had goofy ears on that I forgot were on for the whole day because they just get, you know, you know, Delilah kept saying, keep the goofy ears on, keep the goofy ears on. I said, why? Because I have chlamydia? She was like, yes. So she was like, because you're a goofball. So I went and picked that up. I picked up the chlamydia medication with goofy ears on. And that was fun. But I remember the last day starting to feel a little bit better and getting absolutely fucking trashed with my mom at Epcot going around the different worlds and having a beer in every world. That was my mom's idea. She was like, let's drink a beer in every world. I was like, are you depressed? She was like, yes. I want to chill with your mom. Now, do they have an Epcot style thing in the Disney LA? Because I heard the Disney California is kind of small. Yeah, I, is, I heard it's so. not as good as you the Disney Universal. Orlando. Universal is the one. But but is that you, far away? Well, from Anaheim to LA, I'm oh. thinking maybe I'll do. You know, see, I might have to do Universal. Maybe I'll do Universal that Thursday or Friday. But then I have to leave at like five o'clock to do the shows. Because they got like the Simpsons and like the Hog, you know, all the Harry. I've Potter. been to the Universal in LA. I've been to that one before. That's small and doable. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got to see. I got to see because we will be with T.T. Jerry. T.T. Jerry said she wants to see the Sunset Strip at night. And I said, T.T., two problems. A, I have shows at the Brea Improv, so I won't be able to get to the Brea Improv to L.A. At, it'll be like 3 o'clock in the morning by the time we get to L.A. Two, you will be shot in Los Angeles if you're there at, at nighttime. I, you're going to get shot because you already look like Easy e <laughs> So... <laughs> T.T. Jerry in L.A., it's good. people are going to think Easy e came back to life. <laughs> um, you look like Easy e if he went trans. So, so T.T. Jerry, wow, T.T. Jerry should play Easy e in the movie. I mean. Um, or maybe we'll shoot a scene where she plays Easy e and bullies you. By the way, wh- yeah, I would love that. What a fascinating conversation yesterday at breakfast. We're sitting there. Fe- I'm feeding Violet her oatmeal. Um, the kids are eating their uh, magic spoon, which they've grown to love. Promo code chaos um, are eating their magic spoon cereal, getting their protein uh, for the day before their uh, summer camp. And T.T. Jerry begins to tell, start telling us a story about um, a time in prison. She said, we started talking about, listen, babe, we've all been in a situation where, where we're a little tight on cash, right? I mean, maybe you can't afford to put a few gallons of gas in the car. Maybe you can't go to the save the day, whatever, whatever, right? It, it happens. It's the economy. It's, it's a million things. And hindsight's twenty twenty, And you can't change the past. Don't beat yourself up about it, bubs. We all go through it. But what I can tell you, what we can do, is we can download the banking app called Dave, D-A-V-E, and you can get $500 cash instantly with extra cash. 
That's more money to fill the tank, buy a wedding gift, catch up on your bills, do whatever you want. Now, millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Just think of it as just Dave's. It's just a nice little, it's just massaging. It's just give, just stroking you a little bit. It's just stro If a bank app could reach out and give you a handy, that's Dave. Because they'll give you a little extra cash, just stroke you out a little bit. It feels nice. That's what I do is I use Dave to feel good. Download Dave from the App Store right now. That's D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees do apply. Banking provided by Evolve, and they are a member of the FDIC. Okay? So I'm telling you, Dave, get that $500 of extra cash instantly. Go put some gas in you. All right. Seat Geek. I just used this last week to go to the Yankees Red Sox game with my pops, even though he couldn't take a shit. Seat Geek is the app that I use. It's the site that I use because they get the cheapest seats. They tell you exactly where you're sitting, and it just is like a system where it's monitoring all these other websites and it gets you the best deal. You can go, and it's not just sports, an event, artist, team, whatever you want. If, they, if they're selling tickets, Seat Geek's involved. They, so what they do is all the tickets from all the internet into one place to make buying simple. So it just gives you the best chance to get the lowest price. Um, and we've got the hookup. Right now on SeatGeek, if you use the code CHAOS, you're going to get $20 off your tickets at SeatGeek. So go get the SeatGeek app. Go find the seats you want to the event you want and then put in the code CHAOS, C-H-A-O-S, and you're going to get $20 off. So $20 off already cheap tickets. Good for you. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code CHAOS. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Code CHAOS, $20 off for your first SeatGeek order. Okay? So do it. SeatGeek, CHAOS, 20 bucks off. Send me pics from your seats. She started asking me um, if I liked pork. And uh, because uh, uh, my stepson is a vegan, so he doesn't eat he he doesn't eat you know any meat products. And Vinny was saying how she just found this really good vegan bacon that tastes just like bacon. And I was like, I don't know if I like even bacon in general. I was like, um, I like bacon, but I don't love it. And she goes, You you don't like pork? And I said, I do, I do like pork. Um, I said, but I don't love it. And she goes, she goes, you know, she goes. I said, did they ever have pork? In, in in prison and I said do you ever get like a bacon egg and cheese in prison she said once a month we'd get we'd get egg and cheese but she goes we were getting pork but then these fucking Muslims made us stop getting pork and I said whoa what are you upset about and she said no no no, no. she goes she goes I like Muslim people she goes but in prison she goes they were just she goes it was interesting that they would be yelling that they would be yelling about there being pork in the cafeteria when I was sucking their dick the night before, or I was having sex with them in my cell the night before. She goes, so all of a sudden they can't eat pork because of their religion. But she was like, but you could fuck me in the ass for your religion. And I was like, that's interesting. And I said, V, can I just have my phone one second? V's got my cell phone um, gently resting on her chest. Um, that's fine. Um, wait, and then we'll go back to it. But I sent Pimp this text message yesterday because I wanted to remember this because this is because um, we're teaching Jerry, um, uh, not teaching Jerry, but Jerry's starting to learn, um, you know, like new words and his vocabulary. He's back in school getting her GED, taking classes. But she still, she said at this point in her life, she would mix up words and she constantly mixed up iconic and ironic. She would mix those words up. So she sent me, a um, uh, message. Uh, 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 she she said something the other day, where I was laughing. I was laughing really hard. And I oh, did I send this? I think I might have sent this to the Vanity and Homeless Pimp group chat, where she said that um, she said this to one of the officers. Um, hold oh, okay, here we go. She said this to one of the correction officers. If she got into a fight, she had got into a fight with uh with a Muslim guy uh, about this whole pork thing because she said she would she said if you were if you guys if you hooked up if you were dl gay and you hooked up with her in prison she would keep her mouth shut as long as you were nice to her you were nice to her treated her with respect treated her like a human being she's like i get it people want to get home to their families and if i can help them do that with this ass i'll help them do that with this ass but she said if you all of a sudden she said there was a lot of guys who they as soon as they would bust a nut now 
they want to act like they don't know her. They want to act like, oh, like they're homophobes and calling her all names and stuff. So she was like, fuck those guys. And she said one Muslim guy was in her face about the pork, serving the pork. And she says, she said, she said this, this, when she was recanting the story, she said, she goes, but, because again, she would, she, would, she would mess up iconic and ironic. She goes, oh, she goes, but it's okay that you was just having sex with me. Ain't that against your religion? That's iconic. So she meant that's ironic, but she said that's iconic. That it'd be iconic for you to be having sex with her against your religion, but then also not eating pork. So I was laughing pretty hard because as she's telling all these stories, like, you know, going off, going crazy. She had a cigarette in her ear. Feeding, I'm feeding Violet the oatmeal. And then um, uh, Delilah and my stepson um, were watching the movie Annabelle on Netflix. So that's the kind of dysfunctional family that I had going on is they're watching a scary movie about a possessed doll. All this happening at 7.45 in the morning. We're about to take them to school. They're just watching Annabelle, kind of not even listening to what's being said um, from their TT. So here you go. You can take the phone back. Damn, I wish I had an Uncle TT. Fuck. I know. So it's interesting because, you know, it's the kind of family that I would never trade them in for anything. Like I, I, I think the upbringing that my children are getting is, is iconic. I think it is iconic because I, I don't know too many people who are, who are getting this kind of upbringing, and I'm proud of it. And that's why, you know, this I Am Poppy segment I like because it's like I like to share with you guys about the kind of parenting I'm doing. And, you know, we, you can give me tips. Maybe I can find out things that helped you, give you tips. Um, by the way, one, um, one thing that I want to share, if you're a parent out there, what I've been doing every day and my kids love it, every day I ask them what their favorite moment of the day was. So it's, it's easy to think about, oh, what, what's your favorite part of the day? To really get a moment, you have to sit and critically think and reflect on your day. And, I, and I'm thinking that it's making them happier. Uh, and they really look forward to it. They're like, oh, dad, daddy, ask me about my favorite moment of the day. And, they, and they've, they've sat and thought about a moment. And then they start to think back. It's almost like a, a mental diary that they're doing. And then I've asked my daughter, by the way, to write down her favorite moment of the day every day for the past week. And it's just a fun little activity we have. Um, as a parent, what do you, how are you going to teach your kids about climate change? What do you do? So I think as a parent, what I'll probably tell my kids about climate change is that just because I want to push blame, just because I know it's probably my generation that caused it with, 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 you know, with using aerosol cans and Chernobyl, I'm going to blame it on the grandparents and say because they dropped a nuclear bomb on Japan, we ripped a hole in the atmosphere – and and um, that's what causes climate change. I'm going to blame it on people who are already dead. I'm not going to take any responsibility for climate change, even though my generation probably is the generation that pushed us over the edge to no return. Um, but it is interesting to be living now during a time when I'm not going to go ahead and say we're definitely the world is going to end, but we're probably above a 50 percent chance now of we're at the end, which is which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Because every other time in history, you were living in kind of like a real comfortable time. Where now, if you just embrace it, if you just embrace that sea levels are going to go up seven feet when Greenland melts, then, you know, you kind of just like you got I, what, what, do, what do we say every week? Accept. Just accept. The more you resist, the more problems you're going to have. Just accept that if you're living in Florida or a low-level coastal community, you're going to be underwater soon. So accept and invest in scuba equipment. That's <laughs> what it's going to be. Um, but listen, history repeats itself. And now we're entering the Christory, the Christory segment, the Christory Stefano segment, where I like to talk about a historical topic. First, we're going to do, and we're going to do this every week. So if you're looking for a fun fact about history week after week, this is the place, this day in history. So July 26th, it is July 26, 2022. On this day in history, in 2016, guess who was nominated by the DNC? The DNC 
Democratic National Convention. Guess who was nominated to be Madame Presidente? Miss Hillary Rodham Clinton. So Hillary Rodham Clinton was nominated on July 26, 2016 by the Democratic Party to be the president. So she was nominated by the DNC. And then just a few short months later, she was given a DNR, do not resuscitate, because her shit failed miserably. And she lost. Um, <laughs> on July 26, 1776, the U.S. Postal Service was established by the Second Continental Congress. And guess who was first postmaster general? That's right. Fucking Mr. Founding Fathers of Herpes himself, Benjamin Franklin. Mr. He put it in your grandma's ass. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin, banging all y'all grandmas doggy style, was the first, first postmaster general of the post office sending his dick and balls in a package to your grand, to your nanny's house. April 26, uh, July 26, 1776. So now as we start every Chris Reed to Stefano segment, we're going to play a little game of guess who I am. Okay, you're at home right now. Start shouting it out. Start yelling in your house, yelling at your car dashboard, yelling at the Amazon boxes you're piling up in the warehouse, yelling from your prison cell, yelling from the presidential office if President Biden is listening. Which, by the way, President Biden has Covey Wovey. Just want to FYI, President Biden has Covey Wovey because he secretly came to my shows in Providence, Rhode Island, where I gave the whole crowd COVID. <laughs> Um, as a COVID survivor, how do you think he's going to do? As a COVID survivor, I want to tell President, I want to tell you, President Joe Biden, that you should retire. Um, <laughs> no, President Biden, I want to tell you, as a COVID Wobi survivor, that there might be some dark days ahead of you mentally, just mentally. You're going to be fine. You're going to survive. You're taking the Paxlovid, the Paxlovid's dogs, the Paxlovid's dogs. Your lungs are protected. You're going to be fine, but just know mentally there is a neurological component to this where if you lose your smell and taste, buddy, Prez, if you lose your smell and taste, dude, it's going to, it's, it's bad. It just, it, that's the part that really screws you is losing smell and taste. I know people are like, oh, you'll lose, you'll lose weight, which thanks for the fat jokes immediately. You'll lose weight. It's better to not be able to smell and taste. Yeah, fuck you, okay? Because all I want to do is taste the chicken parm. And I overate, by the way. I, you, I, some people go the opposite way. I overate because I kept eating things to see if I would taste it. So then I, there I am ingesting 5,000 calories of chicken parm. I didn't taste a cent, uh, one calorie of it. But I'm like, oh, maybe the taste will kick in. It'll hit me all at once. But you know what I did? You know what saved my life, by the way? Do you know what more people need to start doing when they get Covey Wovey and they're all congested? Neti pot. I hit that neti pot. I was fucking Nettie Crocker. I was Neti White with that goddamn neti pot. I was hitting that shit two, three times a day, not even using boiled water or distilled water. I went right from the sink. And they say not to go from the sink because you can get a microbe in your nose that can cause... Um, meningitis i said well maybe the fucking meningitis will bring my smell and taste back bitch so i went right on the neti pot okay i hit that i was fucking ned flanders i was neti flanders i hit that neti pot all day every day and then my smell and taste started to gradually come back the hatred for my family has not it's gotten worse um so let's play who am i okay you ready for this let's go who am i i'm located in rome so i'm italian I'm about 1,942 years old. I have two sides. One's called the gate of life. One's called the gate of death. I hosted a bunch of events. I was like the modern day Madison Square Garden. I'm one of the seven new wonders of the world, even though I'm 1,942 years old, but I stay healthy. I'm still standing. And I had white, Jewish slaves that would run around and reenact battles and kill animals and kill each other all for the spectacle of the Roman people so they could pass their days in the thousand degree heat of the summer in their little Roman empires. I'm the biggest amphitheater in the world still to this day. Who am I? If you guessed, if you guessed, um, the Parthenon? Parthenon? You're wrong. Okay? If you guess the Statue of Liberty, you're wrong. 
If you guess the King Smoothie Center, you're wrong. If you guess the Coliseum, the Coliseum, you are ding, 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 correct, bitch. The Coliseum in ancient Rome, if you've ever been there, you have to go. Now, I've never been there. Venetia was there in 2012 when um, that Coney guy was going viral. Remember Coney? He was like the first viral thing. I remember, two th I remember yeah, 2012. That's when I first started Guy Code, and I was doing Coney bits. Um, I was calling myself Coney O'Brien online. Oh, God. <laughs> Bombing. Yeah. Do you remember the bit? What was the no, I don't remember the bit. I remember trying to get them on Guy Code. Do you and have they, your old old notebooks? I, you know what's so crazy? I do have my old Guy Code notebook. Just fucking dust those off and shoot them. We should shoot Guy Code like shit code. Shoot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just shoot fucking code. We should shoot COVID code. <laughs> That'd be funny. Um. <laughs> so the Coliseum. What's interesting about this is anytime you look through history and you find out they had white slaves, you're like, whoa, hold on, wait a second, sister. And then, because that's who the gladiators were. Do you realize when you watch the movie like Gladiator with Russell Crowe, or you watch Spartacus, or you learn about gladiators, or you watch American Gladiators on, you know, the, 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 old, the old show, the gladiators were slaves. So what they would do is when the Roman Empire would go conquer a new country. They would go to this country and they would look for the best warriors. And some of them they'd kill. Some of them I'm sure they'd fuck in the ass. Some of them they'd make go in their army. But some of them they'd say, you know what? Now you're enslaved, Poppy, and you are going to be a gladiator. Listen, you know me. You know I like CBD gummies. You know it's Sunday scaries is the only option I choose. It helped me get through COVID. It helps me unwind after doing podcasting. It helps me unwind after getting yelled at by my family. It helps me unwind after, you know, uh, you know, I have to pay more money for something else that broke in the house. Sunday Scaries helps it all, okay? You can, f I feel a pit in my stomach sometimes when I'm just scared about, you know, anything that's going to happen tomorrow. And Sunday Scaries just keeps me level and keeps me great. It relaxes me. It's the perfect CBD gummy for professionals on the grind or grinder like me, super moms like me, students of the game like me, party animals, regretful, drunk sexters, hello. Um, it helps you go to sleep. It just helps put me in the mood. Literally, without Sunday Scaries, I can't be the podcaster that I am. I can't be doing Chrissy Chaos without Sunday Scaries. It's literally my fuel. It's my gasoline to my car. It's, 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 it's the junk in my trunk. Sunday Scaries. 2022 is all about self-love and taking care, better care of yourself. So the best way to do that is Sunday Scary CBD Gummies. That is the answer, okay? And look, I'm going to save you a little bit of time and money right now because all you got to do is sit down and listen to me right now. Go to sundayscaries.com and use promo code chaos. You're going to get 25% off. That's right. I did not mess that up. That's 25% off at sundayscaries.com with the promo code chaos. I'm telling you, they're the CBDs for you. Give them to your friends. Give them to yourself. 25% off sundayscaries.com promo code chaos. You're going to fight in the Coliseum. Which, by the way, there were many Colosseums. The Colosseum was just the first one the, of its size. And the Colosseum, the actual Colosseum was built in 80 AD um, by an emperor. I forgot what the, who the emperor, what was, the, oh, the emperor uh, Ves, Ve, uh, Vespasian, who the Vespa was named after. Um, Vespasian, who is the founder, he's the founder of the Vespa. Um, the Colosseum was named Vespasian. He wanted to build something. And uh, because every Caesar, every Caesar salad of Rome was scared of a revolt. That's all they wanted to do was please the people. So these gladiatorial games kept the people distracted, kept the people loving their emperor. So he wanted to have like a hundred game, like a hundred days of blood where basically a hundred days in a row when he became emperor at this newly minted Colosseum, <coughs> you know, big structure. He was going to, I'm going to have the citizens of Rome, which held about 50,000 people, which is huge. Um, he was like, I'm going to have games. And every day there were games. In the morning, it would usually be like a man versus a beast, fighting a beast. 
Then in the afternoon, guess what they do? Public executions. That's what they would do. That's you would get publicly executed for funsies. And, um, you know, they'd burn you at the stake. They'd feed you to wild animals. They'd have the Roman army come and shoot you with spears. So it's just the origin of the concentration camp? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I would say the Romans were the first Nazis. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so they, so they, and then they do public executions. And then at the end of the day, or like not the nighttime, because obviously there's no lights yet, because the Romans, you know, we hadn't invented electricity yet. Um, Thomas Edison was still a few years away. Um, they, they, um, they would have gladiator fights where the best warrior from one group would fight the best warrior from another. And a lot of times, you know what they would do to raise the stakes? A lot of people don't know this, but in our research, we found this is the gladiators a lot of times were from the same school. So you would have to fight your brother that you came up with, like fighting someone on the same team, not always to the death, by the way. I, even though, for as much as I want to lie about it and tell you that every gladiator got decapitated and they threw their head into, you know, was eaten by a fucking bear, most, actual, most fights, TBH, were not to the death. One out of every 10 fights, roughly, was to the death. <clears throat> but if it was a big one, like if you were fighting for the emperor, you were going to fight to the death. Okay, you were going to fight to the absolute death because that's what the crowd wanted. But at any point during even a death match, you could ask for mercy. You could say you could put one finger up, which Violet does now. She gets up when she comes out. She just puts one finger up and then she points. She'll do. That's the thing she does. She points. She just Violet. She just looks around and points at people. And she sees spirits, by the way. My daughter 1,000% sees ghosts. I don't know if it's ghosts of like other children, ghosts of animals, ghosts of people that have died in that house, but she will wake up sometimes and she'll just point. And she'll just be looking with wacky, crazy hair with a, a diaper full of shit and piss that I can kind of 30, 40% smell now, just pointing at things. So that's what you could do as a gladiator. You could put one finger up, okay, and you could ask for mercy if you did not want to be killed. Now, a lot of times that was, you know, look down upon and this emperor for doing that would go like this and kill you anyway because now and now you're gonna go out like a bitch because as a gladiator when you got overtaken the way to die was to get a knife to the throat and take it without flinching and then you would go to the afterlife as a champion and if you won your match like a big match not every match but if you won your big match you would be granted your freedom you would be given a stick what was the stick called Forgot what the stick was called. What was that stick called? I think it's in my notes. You'd be given a stick, just a nice fucking stick, and then you would walk around with this stick, and you were granted your freedom as a gladiator because gladiators at that time, it was ironic, not iconic. It was ironic and iconic because they were slaves, yes, but the more you won and the more the crowd loved you, you became famous, you became wealthy, you know how an NBA athlete, let's say, ha, you know, makes 50 times the salary of an average person? That's what the gladiators were. They would make 12 times the salary of an average Roman citizen. So they made money, but, but they would have to give the money their handlers. They all had managers, and the managers would kind of keep their money until they got their freedom, if they ever got their freedom. So it was a trident. They would be given a trident. Um, but I thought it had another name. I don't know. Sounds like comedy. It is. It, literally, if 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 I if if this was ancient Rome, I'd be a gladiator, and I, that's what I I'd be a gladiator, and I'd be fighting. I'd be fighting animals. I'd be. I would think I'd ask for mercy. By the way, all I the, would ask for mercy. All the New York comics are fighting in one gladiator pit. Who wins? Honestly, dude, if every single person. I think Mark Norman hides in the back, sneaks out. Mark Norman might sneak out, and yeah, he'd be kill, killing people from behind. I think Shane Gillis wins, just because he's such a, dr a drunk fucking ogre of a guy. He's just so big, and when he gets mad, and if he's buzzed up a little bit, if they're if, you know we're drinking ancient Roman wine, it's like you know, God, to fucking try to kill him, it would just be too much. That'd be tough. That'd be. Tough. I'd give up. I'd be like, dude, I don't want to fight you. I was dying laughing the other week. Somebody told his girlfriend her dress was ugly. 
and he just went in the audience and popped off on some guy because <laughs> he told <laughs> wait they she said he that Shane... Shane's girl her dress was ugly oh, yeah. was it was it though <laughs> I don't know uh, I would have loved to see that oh here go back to the notes me yeah. um go back to my notes for a second just because um yeah so um the seating choices for the Coliseum were interesting so in the front row you had of course the emperor you had the emperor you had the high up the senate right all the big wigs and then you had the only women up there was called the vestal virgins who were just the virgins that were for the emperor it was just you know it was just his harem of women so you had this interesting thing because you would have the vestal virgins and the emperor and the senators in the front row then in the second row it would just get progressively worse in that next tier I think you'd have like Romans tax paying citizens. Then in the top row, like the most bullshit row was non-citizens and women, just regular women. So you have to ask yourself, you have to ask if you were a woman, if you were a woman in ancient Rome, you have to ask yourself, listen, do I want to be in the Caesar's harem where yes, I'll get banged out. Yes, I'll be pretty much a slave. Yes, I'll have to just, you know, you know, give these dirty old senators blowjobs, but I'll have front row seats when my favorite gladiator is fighting next week. Or do I want to sit in the upper row, have my dignity and morale and morals? Yes, but I'll be a basic ass bitch at the top of the Coliseum. You have to ask yourself that. I want you to ask yourself that at home and, you know, let us know. Write in the comments who you would be. Go to patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Get involved. Um, whatever you want to do. Now, it's interesting. Certain classes of people were banned from the Coliseum. Guess who that included? Former gladiators. So if you won your freedom, that's nice. But bitch, don't come to another fight ever again, which I understand. If I stepped out of comedy, anybody, anytime I'm asked by a friend or family member, family member, if I want to go to a comedy show with them, I'm like, are you a fucking piece of shit? I'll cut your fucking head off. I don't want to go to a comedy show. I don't care at all. If I went to a comedy show, I would be la mis, okay? I, I'd rather go, I'd fucking rather go to a public execution than go to a comedy show, okay? I don't want to, I'd rather go to the dentist than go sit and, I don't want to do it. It's what I do for a living. No. So gladiators weren't allowed to go. Actors were not allowed to go because again, in ancient Rome, if you were doing any type of public performance, gladiator, actor, poet, any type of public performance, you were looked at as, that's gross. They're like, ugh, you want us to look at you? Who the fuck do you think you are? So comedy back then? No way, dude. I'd, I'd be a, they'd look at me like a piece of shit. They, like a little piece of shit piss ant because I'm doing public performance. Were people even insecure then, you think? Were people insecure? Yeah. I think people were insecure. But I think I think insecurity goes back to, you know. You think so? I think you have to be pretty smart to be insecure. So you don't think they were smart enough to even reach the insecurity level yet? That's an interesting point. I would just assume they're insecure because everybody's. I, I just thought, like, there's, there's, you know, cave paintings of, of, of um, you know, 5,000 years ago, you know, people making up saying that the dog ate their homework. That, that a woolly mammoth ate their homework or something. That's true. Like there's there's cave paintings of like, oh, a saber-toothed tiger ate my homework. Or um, uh, there's cave paintings of like a, a woman throwing a guy out of her house because he was cheating on her. Like that. So I feel like, you know, like Socrates says, people will be people. At the Coliseum, celebrities, um, being a celebrity and a sex symbol, you were a celebrity and a sex symbol as a gladiator, but you also looked down upon also, who weren't who weren't um, allowed to be at the Coliseum prostitutes. So, toots, actors, and gladiators were all looked at in the same vein by the Roman people, which is basically you. No thanks. Um, so, um, uh, what else? So, you would only, by the way, as a gladiator, a lot of it was showmanship. So, just because you want, just winning wasn't enough. You had to win in fashion. You had to do this in a way like a professional wrestler. You had to do this in a way where you're like, where the crowd had to start chanting your name Chrissy, Chrissy, Chrissy. And then you would be given your freedom. Because the, a lot of times you'd win as a gladiator, but the emperor who made all the rules was like, yeah, I know it says in the fucking law 
that I'm supposed to make you free, but I'm the emperor. I have a Caesar haircut. I have a crown of thorns around my head and I'm banging vestigial virgins in the front row. I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to grant your wish. But if the crowd, if the crowd was cheering your name, this emperor kind of felt like that they had no choice but to give you your freedom. Um, basically, it was just like, you know, th they did these gladiator games to basically say, hey, people of Rome, I'm a good emperor, right? So please don't rise up and kill me. Spartacus, who we will talk about one day in a future episode, did cause a slave revolt and gladiator revolt and did rise up and kill everyone. And that was pretty cool. Um, so, um, by the way, the gate of life was called the Porta Sanavaria and the gate of death was called the Porta Libertina. So you would come in through the gate of life and you would leave sometimes through the gate of death. Um, oh, the rudest, by the way, the rudest was the wooden stake symbolizing freedom. So if you were given a wooden, it was a, a dark brown wooden stake that you would be given and that would symbolize your freedom. Now, if T.T. Jerry was a gladiator and won his freedom, it'd be tough for him to prove it because he would stick that rudest right up his ass and it would go bye-bye magic trick immediately. So it's interesting. So the Colosseum, which still stands today, which, by the way, there is talk next March of me doing stand-up comedy in Italy. And if I do stand-up comedy in Italy, the crew's coming. We're going to film it because I got to be walking around with a little cup of espresso <laughs> with a little fucking cardigan on my shoulder. By the way, if I go to Italy, I'm telling you this right now just because I feel like I have always want to do this. If I go to Italy, I'm going to experience it as a gay man. I'm going – I will be gay in Italy. Just letting you know. I'm hooking up with the men. I'm just saying that out loud. I, and I'm sticking to that. I will hook up with men only in Italy for the two weeks that I'm there. We will go to the Colosseum. We'll go to all these places. But I will be on boats in Venice with men. I will be attracted to men only. I am only going to hook up with men in Italy. So, sorry. That's what it's going to be. Because I think gay Italian men are the top gays. And if I'm going to go gay, I'm going to the top. I'm not going... Bottom shelf. I'm not getting with like, you know, a Latvian gay. <laughs> Shout out Latvia. Shout out Mateo. Shout out Mateo. Mateo is who I'd like to have on my arm. He's an Adonis. He is an Adonis. So it's interesting about the Coliseum. I watched the documentary on it. On, I think it's on the History Channel. We're only on episode one, which talked about the first years of the um, Coliseum. So the interesting thing is about Coliseum, biggest amphitheater in the world. Um, not every gladiator fought to the death. White slaves. Those are the three things that I want you to tell your kids about the Colosseum. So there you go. Every time, you know, we have to hear about how bad slaves are, American slaves and blah, blah, blah. I get it's great. I get it's horrible. But also just know that, you know, the Colosseum was fucking bad, too. And they would, they would feed you to lions, tigers and bears. Oh, my. Um, we like should probably edit that part out. Um, <laughs> it does feel like, like uh, slavery was in every every single culture. All of them. Did you want to add a link? Yeah. Okay. Um, here we go. V is, v is oh, on my Instagram running Also, it. now they're, they're issuing a blackout warning because of the heat. So do you have any blackout tips? Okay, so the blackout tips that I have, um, the blackout tips that I have are um, don't do what I did where the last blackout I was involved in, um, I think it was 2004 or something like that, is I slept in my car. Um, and I fell asleep and I had the air conditioning running all night. And then I woke up dripping in sweat at 5 a.m. and my car died. So that was the dump. That was dumb. But it was so fucking hot because the entire, like the power was just out. Do you remember that? The blackout in New York City? I was young, but yeah. I, it was Vaguely? Yeah. It I, was bad. I wasn't, I was out east. I was just on the beach. Yeah. Do you remember it? I was in Greece. You were in Greece for that blackout. So you, there was no blackout there. Um, I could see you sleeping in your pool this time around. On the well, float. I was going to say this time around, I think it'd be a little bit better because I got the sunroom. I got, yeah, I got a pool. I got some places where I could cool off. I um, can't imagine living in Manhattan for a blackout. It must be weird. That's got to suck. Yeah. See, blackouts in places like California, like say South, you know, if you live in Southern California, it's like, yeah, it gets really hot in LA in the Valley, but you could also then just, if you don't have a car, find a way to get to Malibu and it's 30 degrees cooler there. Mm. It was like legitimately freezing in Malibu when I was there last week. That's a good tip for the fans. Just get to Malibu if yeah. there's a blackout. <laughs> get to get Malibu, Malibu. <laughs> you peasants. That's, by the way, where I got COVID, probably, I think, in Malibu. Um, so that's the Coliseum. Um, let me know what you guys think about it. 
I, I think Coliseum's fascinating. I want to start to do a little bit more Roman history because I want to learn with you guys, girls and babies here on this podcast. I don't know much about Roman history. Um, they did take a lot of the Colosseum stuff and all the kind of their traditions from the Greeks, but that's a story for another day. Um, the Fetids. So, so um, yeah. And I am Chris Stefano, and me and, by the way, we talked about it, I think, on last week's episode, but me, uh, we, are, we do fight for the Autism Army. FYI, mm-hmm. we do fight for the Autism Army, and we are getting Autism Army merch. Um, 100%. So here on the show, also, we like to get the fans involved. We encourage you guys to make funny names. We love to laugh at the funny names. If you go to patreon.com slash Christy Comedy, you can get your question on the show, and we are going to start next week. We're going to start. V has marked this down. We're going to start zooming in one lucky fan to the episode. So that's the only way to get involved. Patreon.com slash Christy Comedy plus 75 plus hours of content that only exists there. It's fun, fun, fun. So this is from Brooke Noel. How long do you think you would last in prison and what's the first thing you do? Well, I don't think I'd last in prison very long and I would take T.T. Jerry's advice, which I've told on this uh, show many times, is I'd immediately go trans and be asked to be sent to the transgender unit of the prison. Um, Well, you you sent me that article about the trans woman getting people pregnant in the woman's facility yes see that trans woman is getting people uh she um i guess she's a guy she's a biological male that went trans and was banging actual women Mm -hmm. in the les i guess well not just in the women's part of the jail banging them all and got them all pregnant so it's like you know what what are you supposed to do are you uh, uh, can you sneak sex in prison or sex is forbidden in prison you allowed to have sex you can definitely sneak it even guys to, are not allowed to have sex. But you can tip the guards. You can just kind of. So guys can't have sex in prison. That's fucking gay. Um, <laughs> Eric T. Fuck, Mary kill. Oh, my God. This is the hardest one ever. Fuck, Mary kill. Teddy Roosevelt, Donald Trump, Benjamin Franklin. Fuck. Okay. So as much as this pains me to say. I think the first person I'm going to have to kill just because I know the other three probably had it too, but there's no documented evidence. But Benjamin Franklin did have the herpel yerpel, the herpy werpies and the siffy wiffy syphilis, and there was no medication back then. So I'm going to have to kill Benjamin Franklin if we're hooking up during his time. If we're hooking up during my time, I'm going to have to get him on a seven-day antibiotic, and then I can fuck him because I'm just not trying to get sif. So I'd kill Benjamin Franklin, which I know sucks. I'd probably, I'd fuck, I'd fuck Teddy Roosevelt because Teddy Roosevelt fought in the Spanish-American War. Teddy Roosevelt, like I said last week on the pod, was kind of semi-quasi responsible for getting Puerto Rico to be U.S. Commonwealth. So anybody who's near Latinas knows how to fuck. So that's Teddy Roosevelt. Donald Trump, I'm going to marry because I really believe in my heart I can finally be the wifey that Donald Trump loves back. I think I could convince Donald Trump what true love is by being his wife. So I'd marry Donald Trump, I'd kill Benjamin Franklin, I'd fuck Teddy Roosevelt. That's my answers. What about you guys? Fuck, marry, kill Teddy Rose, Donald Trump, Benjamin Franklin. I'd like to, bring, I'd like to open that question up to the group. Let's start with Vanity at first. Okay, kill my husband. Um, fuck, uh, ben Interesting. Why? He was like, uh, he was a fuckboy. He was a fuckboy. So he was like, True. Benjamin Franklin is actually he was like Pete Davidson. Benjamin Franklin is our is if if Pete Davidson was a founding father, he's Benny Frank. That's it. Getting that pussy. Yep. He's a man. Good answers. Uh, I'd fuck all of them. Why not? Why not? Is that an option? Why the hell not? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can what, do whatever the hell you, you want. What did you think about uh, Ivana Trump died, and then this week uh, her boy toy died at like 49? Her boy toy died? Ivana, yeah. How did he die? That's why I'm like, yo, what is going on? What did she know? That's weird. Super I didn't weird. hear that. He died at 49. Yo, I didn't hear that. I heard that she died. She fell down her stairs, which is also suspicious. When the boy toy dies, something's up. D- um, oh, Ivana Trump had four ex-husbands. That's funny. But she kept the last name Trump. How did she get Trump? That's like my mom. My mom got divorced from my dad when I was one and kept the last name to step from my mom is Ivana Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I didn't know that. 
her her boy died. That I just, sucked. I mean, I have no idea. It just it it feels weird to me that people just start dropping in clusters like that. Right. Yeah, well, we made fun on Hey Babe. We were making fun of Judge Judy's husband, and then he died. He did? Yeah. Wow, that's your fault, man. How do you feel? I feel <laughs> fucked up. Well, I, uh, it's bittersweet. It's it's bitter because I don't want to see another. I don't want to see somebody die, especially someone as influential as Judge Judy's husband. But I feel good about it because that means Judge Judy's single, hey. coming at that ass. Oh my <laughs> do you? For, this is from Lisa Glebe. Do you feel like? Lisa Glebe, probably Jewish. Jewish slave, gladiator. Uh, oh I'm going to start calling Jewish people gladiators. <laughs> Lisa Glebe, the gladiator. You got to change your patron name to Lisa Glebe, the gladiator. Um, do you feel like a patriot for finally joining the Covey Wovey Club? I feel like a patriot because now that I have COVID, I do feel as if I am. I kind of feel like how... A Navy SEAL has to get through training to become a Navy SEAL and designated as a Navy SEAL representing this country for all she stands for. I feel getting through COVID, now I am legally allowed to fight in the war with China because I've tasted their weapon. I know what it is. I've survived their weapon. I have intel. So now I can finally join the front lines of... By the way, we're in a real estate war with China. China bought... China bought last year over $4 billion of real estate in America. Wild. You are probably living in a Chinese person's house right now. This is probably owned by China. It's what it is. This place is, I guarantee this building's owned by China. China owns it all. China owns me. I'm making merch. Um, all right. Um, so that's... Um, that was a fun app. Um, and I think I want you guys to I want you guys to write suggestions for what you want to hear about in history, what you want to hear about in the I Am Poppy segment, what your fact of the day is, what you guys want to hear. And you can do that. You can email the pod at chrissychaospod at gmail.com. You can leave comments at youtube.com slash christycomedy, which you should all be liked and subscribed to because that's where the pod comes out. You can send DMs to the Chrissy Chaos Pod on Instagram. You can send... Uh, messages to me at Christy Comedy on Instagram which Venetia will respond to you can tweet at us you can go on patreon.com slash Christy Comedy to get involved and be a real Puerto Rican or you can come shout at me and get a fucking meet and greet to a live show when I'm in your area go to ChrisDComedy.com for Tiki Wikis by the way um, I believe this is Tuesday I believe tomorrow the pre-sale is going up for all the new cities that are being announced I'm coming to Milwaukee, I'm coming to uh, Wisconsin, I'm coming to the South, we're adding shows in Philly, we got all these shows lined up, go to chrisdcomedy.com, go right now, the shows might be up there already, or go tomorrow, set an alarm, and see if your city is on that list, the last, the, the second leg of the tour, which by the way, all new material, so it's not called the Chrissy Chaos Tour anymore, this new tour is called Right Intention, Wrong Move, and the artwork is my face in Al Bundy's kid. It's right intention, wrong move, because it's stories about my dad that you've never heard before. Or if you heard them, you've heard them on a podcast, it's in a different way. It's in stand-up, and it's, it's, it's my favorite material. It's what I'm most proud of. Shows that are on sale already, this tomorrow, actually tomorrow, literally tomorrow, we will be in Burlington, Vermont at the Higher Ground Ballroom. We're going to be there doing that brand new hour. Thursday, live podcast in Montreal. Live Chrissy Chaos Pod in Montreal with Jessica Kirsten as a special guest and maybe another special guest coming out of the woodwork. Friday, Club Soda in Montreal doing that brand new hour. And then we got um, the Brea Improv August 17th to the 20th where I'll be telling stories about Disneyland. Then we got San Francisco September 8th to the 10th, Cobb's Comedy Club. Those tickets are almost sold out because the gays love me. September 30th, Chicago Theater. And then all new dates coming around those dates and through the end of the year, New Year's Eve, I'll be on Long Island. So it's going to be fun. All tickets going up at chrisdcomedy.com. So tell your friends. Get the merch. We got new merch coming out of chrisdcomedy.com. We've, um, we've brought back in uh, uh, Vinny, Vinny um, the merch guy. We've brought back in Vinny the, merch, <laughs> Vinny the merch guy. He's back in. So we got new fire merch coming your way. 
And um, tell your friends. Tell your friends. Share this episode. Like and subscribe. Follow the Homeless Pimp on Instagram. Follow Venetia Garris on Instagram. Follow Christy Comedy. Follow TT Jerry. Follow your fucking mom home. Um, long live China. R rest in peace, Ivana Trump, a.k.a. my mother. <laughs>